Yeah, yeah, I've been doing hair transplants for 12 years now, and I, I got into it out of a, out of my own medical practice where I saw some transplants. I got interested in some of the results they had, came down and found that there was a place for me to learn how to do it, and uh, and it's fun. I, you know, it's a uh, it's a fun way to do procedural uh, medicine. It makes pe patients happy. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's the kind of thing that's uh, uh, aesthetic rather than life-threatening, which is, tends to be more of what I do in my other practice, and and uh, so I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And I think the most common question we see is uh, coming is is will it look natural? Uh, you know, people are concerned about density, but they're far more concerned about whether they're going to get a natural look that uh, that. Um, you know, people cannot tell as a hair transplant, but rather as just some mild thinning. Um, probably the second most question is what kind of density can you get? And that's the most difficult question to answer because it's, it's very dependent upon how much area you have to fill, the quality of the, uh, of the donor area, um, and, you know, how much, uh, honestly, much money the patient has to spend. To, uh, to fill the area that needs to be filled. So that's probably the, the most difficult question to answer. Um, you know, everybody asks if it hurts. It really doesn't. You know, more people are, are upset with how long they, you know, they have to sit still rather than how much the actual procedure hurts. And uh, uh, we let people stand and move around and get up and, and stretch. So that, that actually doesn't become an issue. I think the hardest thing is to make sure that everybody's expectations are lined up. And so uh, to sit there and just recommend go for it, you know, is not always the right answer. It usually is the right answer. But you need to make sure that they know what they can expect from one of these transplants. Uh, you know, what they can expect. Uh, they have a limited amount of capital or hair that we can move. And, and you know, where can we put it and how can we put it? But they can expect if we come to a, an agreement on how to do the procedure, they can always expect to look natural. They can n virtually always expect to be able to have a standalone session if we come to an agreement. Um, you know, there are other things that they can't necessarily expect that they may come in asking us about, and we try to make sure that they understand what our capabilities are and what our limitations are. Now, one of the interesting things about this is its international flavor. It, 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 uh, when you become a, pra a practicing physician, you tend to sort of set up shop and stay still. Well, the, the, the new heart experience has given me a chance to be in, in Hong Kong. I'm licensed over in the Middle East in Dubai and have spent a fair amount of time there. I go to Chicago on a, on a very regular basis and, and work here. And you know, In addition, we have offices in, now in Spain, London, Manila, um, Puerto Rico, New York, Atlanta, a number of places, all of which you know are their own unique, th uh, unique institutions, and they're they're fun to go to. Make sure that everybody's doing things in a similar fashion, and uh, and uh, you know we 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 get a chance to uh, cross ideas and make sure that we all you know are moving along and learning to do this in the best possible fashion. Every patient is a patient, uh, and, and you need to understand their underlying medical issues. Uh, most situations can be worked with. There are certain skin diseases that we have trouble with. Uh, there are certain medications that we're not interested in going near the patient with. Um, it turns out, though, that most of those medications, if you talk to their, their private physician or their cardiologist or whomever, uh, you can find out that that the medications can be modified for a day or two and, and you can actually do this procedure. So it's, you, you know, you have to, you have to take everybody seriously and in, ser in, in, in in, in totally understand their medical, their medical condition before you say yes or no, we can do it. Um, but there are very few people who can't go through this. The hot, one of the hot button medical issues of the day is, is stem cell research and, and cloning and, and some of the 
uh, you know, ways of recreating things. At this point in time, it is, it's a very, very distant process. It's been in the pipeline for years. Um, it's going to be in the pipeline for many more years before it's commercially uh, a viable process. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that, uh, you know, you're going to wait three or four years and it's going to be available. Uh, you're going to, uh, you're going to need to, if you want something done, you do it. It works. Uh, you know, in the future, will it come? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, our 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 time our our procedure works now. We we're down to one hair grafts. We're down to uh, you know nice soft hair lines, large volume uh, transplants, and uh, they uh, uh, you know there's no no time like today. Six months later, you've got a good head of hair.